Do you want to come in here or can I record my lectures? All right. The distance the island is from the mainland affects how um, great the immigration rate is. And the closer the island, the greater the immigration, the farther, the smaller. I see it says immigration bigger on large islands. It should say on near islands. And so you can see that the equilibrium number of species on a near island will be greater than the equilibrium number of species on a far island. So let's change this to be near. So thinking about these relationships more, we can see that also the closer an island is to the mainland, the more likely it is that the population can be rescued from extinction and that the extinction is, oops, inversely proportional to distance. And also, the larger the island is, the greater the chance it will catch immigrants. So that extinction, excuse me, immigration on a big island is bigger, is larger than immigration on a small island. So in this figure, we see data of islands, the Sunda Islands, in relationship to New Guinea, the largest mainland island nation, on the bottom axis, x-axis is area in square miles, and then these islands are coded as to their distance. The closest are green, intermediate, blue, and the farthest are purple. And you can see that the purple tend to have, the farther tend to have fewer species. The seminal experiment in testing this theory of island biogeography was performed by Dan Simberloff during his PhD time with E.O. Wilson, and they did their work very near here in the Florida Keys. Looking at tiny mangrove islands, they exterminated, well, first they counted the number of insect species present on the islands, and then they exterminated them all by fumigating the islands, bringing it all to zero. Oops, here. And then after a number of months, 
well, each month they counted the number of species present on the island, and you can see after time, each island reached its equilibrium number again. Now, these weren't necessarily all the same species of insects, just the total number. When we design refuges to maintain wildlife diversity, it's important to consider island biogeography. And in a newly created space, be that an island rising out of the sea or maybe a restored area in a place formerly developed, there are four stages from the beginning where species are increasing in number, not interacting with one another, to a point where they interact. And then during the assortative phase, some will outcompete others, which will decline or disappear. There may also be evolution and specialization. And then the final phase, the so-called evolutionary phase, where species continue to evolve and adapt to this particular environment. The tropics are known for very high diversity, and there are many reasonable explanations for this. It could be because there are so many different habitats and microhabitats. Disturbances are frequent. There's a great variety of herbivores and pathogens, enemies of plants. And a very interesting suggestion is that maybe low nutrient availability leads to low rates of competitive exclusion, which increases diversity. One hypothesis I want to make sure you're familiar with is the so-called Janssen-Connell hypothesis, which helps to explain why individuals of the same species of tree are so far from one another in the tropical forest. This is because the seeds of a tree are dispersed closer to the parent and fewer farther away. But if you look at survival, there it's greater farther from the parent tree. And this is because it's likely that enemies that specialize on the parent tree are more likely to find offspring that establish near the parent, whereas those that are far away have a chance to mature and grow to be big trees themselves. So there have been a number of tests of this, placing seeds at different distances and looking at their attack by weevils. And in this study, there's evidence that pathogens specific to a tree will demolish seedlings close and not those that are far away. And that the experiment was done treating them with fungicide and without. It's only fair to expose you to this other theory of biodiversity and biogeography put forward by Steve Hubble at the turn of the millennium, he said that really it doesn't matter what species is there, most tropical tree species are competitively equivalent so that any species that comes in, the chance of it remaining for a long period of time is pretty good. And whichever species go extinct from a forest, that happens randomly. So when an individual dies, it's replaced by a progeny of one of the other trees in that forest at random. So this colorful little diagram shows, with each square being a different tree species, an individual dies, and then whichever one seed disperses there ends up, beats out the others in competition, that one is established. So. The forest will be filled with N descendants of a single individual in N generations. Not important and maybe impossible to predict which one will win.